people of the internet, Eric here. Today I'm coming to you with another book haul. So stay tuned. Look at these shelves. Aren't they neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the one? The one who has all the books on these shelves. Adventures are told. How many adventures can one shelf hold? Looking around, do you think? Sure, I've got all the books. Okay, people, so I have yet another book haul for you. I honestly was not expecting to do this again um, because we are going to be moving probably within the next month or so. And we already just have so many books. Like, most of the boxes that we're going to be packing is going to be books. So, God. But um, we did get 51 more books from that library sale today. And uh, $830. So, that's pretty, pretty cheap, I think. So, um, like I said, we got 51 books. Uh... Technically, 50 books and one audio. Um, as per usual, I'm going to go through his stuff first. Um, there's this series by um, Darren Shan called um, Cirque de Freak. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, let's see. Um, and there's 12 books in the series and we found the whole series. So the first one is, um, A Living Nightmare. Two is The Vampire's Ass Assistant. Um, three is Tunnels of Blood. Four is Vampire Mountain. As you can tell, it's a vampire series. He, Darren Chan, also wrote a zombie series called Zombie. So, um, book five is Trials of Death. Book six is The Vampire Prince. Hang on one second. Book seven is Hunters of the Dusk. Book eight is Allies of the Night. Book nine is Killers of the Dawn. And these are really short books, so they shouldn't take very long to read. Book ten is The Lake of Souls. Book eleven is Lord of the Shadows. And book twelve is Sons of Destiny. So those are, that's that series. And, bear with me a second. Then he also found his other series called The Saga of Larton Creepslay. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, book one is Birth of a Killer. Book two is Ocean of Blood. Book three is Palace of the Damned. And book four is Brothers of the Death. So, got a bunch of Darren Shan today. He also got The Bridge by Jane Higgins. On the back it says, We rode to war in a taxi cab. Dash found it in Fettler's Lane near the old greengrocer. 
We had gone there looking for food. We were fierce hungry and would have taken anything on offer, but the hostiles had got there first. So I guess it's um like an apocalypse type of thing, I would think. And it's like it's um a short read, so I also got Dead Heat by Joel C. Rosenberg. And I read the back of it and I was like, this is probably his cup of tea because it's not mine. It says, oil prices are surging to, re to record highs. A new dictator is rising in Iraq. China is threatening Taiwan. And in the midst of a world ready to explode, President James McPherson's second term is ending. Who will lead a bitterly divided country over the next four years? The battle to succeed him is heating up into the most fiercely contested race in American history. As the campaign narrows into a dead heat, the Secret Service learns of a cat catastrophic terrorist plot to assassinate one of the candidates. But which one? So, I thought that was more up his alley because he's more into politics and stuff. So, And then he found a book by Diana Wynne Jones that he thought was interesting called Deep Secret. It says, all over the multiverse, the maggots Maybe? Magids? I have no idea. Powerful magicians are at work maintaining the balance between positive and ne negative magic for the good of all. Rupert Venables is the junior magid assigned to Earth and to the troublesome planets of the Corifonic um, Empire. When the Emperor dies without a known heir, Rupert... is called into service to help prevent the descent of the Empire into chaos. At the same time, the senior magid on Earth dies, making Rupert a new senior desperately in need of a protege. Rupert thinks his problems are partially solved when he learns he can meet all five of the potential magids on Earth by attending one SF convention in England. However, the convention hotel sits on a node, a nexus of universes. Rupert soon finds that other forces, some of them completely out of control, are there too. So, I think that actually sounds pretty good. He also got um, The Letters by Luann Rice and Joseph Moniger. Mo Mon Moninger? Moninger. My bad. And that's them on the back. And... Oh, it looks like it's got, you know, a love affair and things like that. Sam is a sports journalist. Um, and it goes, you know, there's intimate love letters and, and stuff. So, yeah. Next is A Heartbeat Away by Michael Palmer. It looks like something political again. Not my cup of tea. Um, Executive Intent by Del Brown. Um, Richard Marcinko's Rogue Warrior, Seal Force Alpha. The Key by Simon Toyne, maybe? Looks creepy. It's about a journalist who has escaped from the highly secretive citadel at the heart of the ancient city of ruin and now lies in, in, in isolation, staring at hospital walls as blank as her memory. Despite her inability to recall her past, something strange is stirring within her. She feels possessed by a sensation she can't name and plagued by whispers only she can hear. Kushikam, the key. To others, the meaning is clear. For a mercenary operating in the Syrian desert, a man known only as the Ghost, Liv may hold the key to one of his history's most powerful secrets. For the brotherhood of monks in the citadel, now cursed by a terrible plague, her return to Turkey may be the only way to ensure their survival. And for a powerful faction in Vatican City, her 
very existence threatens the success of a desperate plan to save the church from ruin. At the center of events that defy explanation and hunted by someone she believes might be trying to kill her, Liv turns to the only person she can trust, a foundation worker named Gabriel Mann. Together they must elude capture and dirty to the plate. <sighs> Excuse me. And journey to the place where all life began. From New York to Rome to the deserts of the Middle East, worlds collide in a race to uncover a revelation dating from the creation of man in this electrifying follow up to the international bestseller Sanctus. It's a follow up. This is the second book. Oh, shit. Oh, well, we're just gonna have to find Sanctus, aren't we? Sounds damn good, though. And then he got Second Sunrise by David and Amy Thurlow. Um, it's about vampires. Cool. <laughs> and the audiobook he got was Brad Thor's The Apostle. So those are all his books. So, so there's 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So he got 26 books. Okay. Now into mine, I got this book called The Dark 30, Southern Tales of the Supernatural by Patricia C. McKissick, illustrated by Brian Pinkney. And it sounded interesting. There's like, I'm not sure how many stories are in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. And I got a book called Crazy Dangerous by Andrew Clavin. This sounded really, really good. It says, um, Sam Hopkins is a good kid who has fallen in with the wrong crowd, hanging around the car thieves and thugs. Sam knows it's only a matter of time before he makes one bad decision too many and gets into real trouble. But one day, Sam sees these thugs harassing an eccentric schoolmate named Jennifer. Finding the courage to face the bullies down, Sam loses a bad set of friends and acquires a very strange new one. Because Jennifer is not just eccentric. To Sam, she seems downright crazy. She has terrifying hallucinations involving demons, the devil, and death. And here's the really crazy part. Sam is beginning to suspect that these visions may actually be prophecies. Prophecies of something terrible that's going to happen very soon unless he can stop it. Doesn't that sound good? Oh my god. And I'm not sure. Oh, this is book three of this I Am Number Four series called Rise of Nine. Um, I know it's a television series or a movie series or something. Um, so I'm intrigued. And right, <laughs> Lorian Legacies Legacies has imprinted there. Next, I got "The Girl Is Murder" by Catherine Miller Haynes. This sounded decent. Um, it says it's the fall of 1942 in New York City, and Iris is dying to help out at her father's detective agency, especially when she discovers that one of Pop's cases involves a boy at her new public school. But when Pop adamantly refuses her help, Iris quickly realizes that it's much easier to lie than to ask permission. Suddenly, this once obedient former private school girl is sneaking out of the house, double-crossing her friends, and dancing at the Savoy till the early morning hours. There's certainly never a dull moment in the private eye business. So that's, that's why I, I was iffy about it, because that's all it says about it. Um, it's saying author, author Catherine Miller Haynes perfectly captures the heartache and the hopefulness of a wartime era, all the while delivering a highly readable, highly entertaining mystery. So, I don't know. It sounded decent. And then I got Blood for Blood by Ryan um, Grodden. And it's the second book to Wolf by Wolf. 
So I can't tell you about it. <laughs> but um, I've heard it's amazing. So next I got Rethinking Normal. It's a memoir in transition by Katie Rain Hill. Um, Katie Rain Hill realized very young that a serious mistake had been made. She was a girl who had been born in the body of a boy. Suffocating under her peers' bullying and the mounting pressure to be normal, Katie attempted to take her life at the age of eight years old. Wow. After several other failed attempts, she finally understood that Katie, the girl trapped within her, was determined to live. In this first-person account, Katie reflects on her pain-filled childhood and the events leading up to the life-changing decision to undergo gender reassignment as a teenager. She reveals the unique challenges she faced while unlearning how to be a boy and shares what it was like to navigate the dating world and experience heartbreak for the first time in a body that matched her gender identity. Told in an unwaveringly honest boys rethinking normal is a coming of age story about transcending physical appearances and redefining the perimeters of normalcy to embody one's true self so i think this sounds really good next i found and i've heard a lot of people talking about this book um it's called abraham lincoln vampire hunter and it's by seth graham smith Indiana, 1818. Moonlight falls through the dense woods that surround a one-room cabin where a nine-year-old Abraham Lincoln kneels at his suffering mother's bedside. She's been stricken with something the old-timers call milk sickness. My baby boy, she whispers before dying. Only later will the grieving Abe learn that his mother's fatal affliction was actually the work of a vampire. When the truth becomes known to young Lincoln, he writes in his journal, Henceforth my life shall be one of rigorous study and devotion. I shall become a master of mind and body, and this mastery shall have but one purpose. Gifted with his legendary height, strength, and skill with an axe, Abe sets out on a path of vengeance that will lead him all the way to the White House. While Abraham Lincoln is widely landed for saving the Union and freeing millions of slaves, his valiant fight against the forces of the undead has remained in the shadows for hundreds of years. That is, until Seth Graham Smith stumbled upon the secret journal of Abraham Lincoln and became the first living person to lay eyes on it in more than 140 years. Doesn't that sound good? Next is called Lost for Words by Alice Whippers, maybe? It says, all Sophie wants to do is forget, but it's not easy now that everything's changed. The house feels too big, school drags on for too long, lights are too bright, the room spins, and her hands get sweaty for no reason. And she can't remember why she was ever best friends with Abigail, who was obsessed with parties and boys. Only the new girl, Rosa Lee, with her, her prose poems and utter confidence might understand, but talking to her seems impossible. Lost in memories of the life she once had, Sophie retreats into herself. But there's only so long she can keep everything bottled up inside before she explodes. Maybe by confronting the tragedy of her past, she'll figure out how to fix her future. So I'm really interested of what happened to, in her past to make her the way she is. So I'm intrigued. Next is... um. I don't know if it's just a trilogy or not, but it's by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, she was the author of, or Gabrielle, my bad. She was the author of Elsewhere, which I haven't read, but I've heard about it. And um, so the first book is called All These Things I've Done. The second book is, be is called Because It Is My Blood. And the third book is because is called In the Age of Love and Chocolate. So it doesn't really say much about it, but it says on the back of the first one, I am Anya Balanchine, maybe. I will be accused, I will be I will defend my honor, I will be pursued, I will be loved, I will apologize, I will be betrayed. So, I mean, that sounds good. 
Next, I grabbed Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. And I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of this book. Um, so I'm not going to read this off. Uh, next is a book by Robin Talley. And I'm trying to remember the name of that other book, the only book, other book that I've actually read by her. Um, it was really, really good. And this is another LGBTQ plus book. So I'm wondering if that's all she writes. But it's called Lies We Tell Ourselves. It sounds so good. Um, in 1959, Virginia, the lives of two girls on opposite sides of the battle for civil rights will be changed forever. Sarah Dunbar is one of the first black students to attend the previously all-white Jefferson High School. An honors student at her old school, she is put into remedial classes, spit on, and tormented daily. Linda... Hairston is the daughter of one of the town's most vocal opponents of school integration. She has been taught all her life that the races should be kept separate but equal. Forced to work together on a school project, Sarah and Linda must confront harsh truths about race, power, and the fact that they may be falling for one another. Isn't that sweet? Boldly realistic and emotionally compelling, Lies We Tell Ourselves is a brave and stunning novel about finding truth and amid the lies and finding your voice even when others are determined to silence it. So I think this is just going to be a beautiful book. I'm probably going to cry my eyes out <laughs> because I'm a big old sap. Uh, the next is called The Trap by Stephen Arnston. Maybe? Arnston? Um, it says it's the summer of 1963 and something strange is afoot in the quiet town of Faro, Iowa. The school's most notorious bully has gone missing. And when Henry and his twin sister, along with their two best friends, start to investigate, things get even stranger. The search leads them to an obscure book called Subtle Travel in the Subtle Self, which teaches them how to leave their bodies in their sleep. But soon the foursome discovers that out-of-body travel has some not-so-subtle side effects. A visit from beyond the grave combines with kidnapping and first crushes in the thrilling interdimensional mystery by Stephen Arntzen. So, I think that sounds really good. Next is uh, White Crow by Marcus Sedgwick. And up here it says, what's on the other side of death? And it says, Rebecca doesn't want to move to Winterfold. She would rather spend the summer in London with her friends. Instead, her father's taken her to this hot, dismal town that's slowly falling off the edge of the cliff, being eaten away by the encroaching sea. Feralith, Feralith has lived in Winterfold her entire life. She knows her way around through the ruined buildings, churches, and graveyards, and along the crumbling paths of the cliffs. Feralith doesn't have any friends until Rebecca comes to town. All is not as it seems in Winterfold. In the shadows of the past lurks a story of a rector obsessed with questions about life and death, God and the devil. And there is a tale of a visitor from Paris who might have the tools to give him the answers once and for all. Feralith has heard the whispers of the past, and she convinces Rebecca to form a pact that leads them to uncover horrors they had only imagined on hot, dark nights. So, that sounds really good. And it's really short. <laughs> I may just go ahead and start reading this. It's only 232 pages. So, cha. Next, I picked up Watch Me Die by Erica Spindler. And it says, before Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans, stained glass restoration artist Mira Gallier had it all. A thriving business doing work she loved and, I, and an idyllic marriage to the perfect man. But the devastating storm stole her beloved husband, his body swept away by flood water, waters never to be found. Now, after years of pain and turmoil, it looks as if Mira, or Myra, whatever, is finally on the verge of peace and emotional stability. But her life, like the magnificent windows blown to bits by her Kate Katrina, is about to be shattered once again. And this time, it's not a killer storm she faces, but a psychopath who will stop at nothing until he possesses her body and soul. 
First, church windows that she restored are vandalized, and the priest who watched over them is brutally murdered. Spray painted across the glass are the words, He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Then, New Orleans is rocked by a terrifying chain of murders that all seem to be linked to Myra. The police, led by homicide detectives Spencer Moore? Malone, are following a string of clues left by the killer on each victim and beginning to wonder if the murderer isn't Myra Gallier herself. As Myra begins to unravel under pressure from all sides and fear for her life, she's uncertain who she can trust. And when a man from her past appears out of nowhere, sparking something long forgotten in her heart, he quickly becomes the police's new prime suspect. One by one, the people in Myra's life are targeted until it's clear that the killer has been saving her for last and that there's nowhere left to run. Doesn't that sound good? Um, next, I found two books in the uh, Murder, She Wrote series by um by uh jessica fletcher and donald bain and it's based on the murder she wrote series the for this this one that i picked up is book 39 prescription for murder and then uh, death of a blue blood And then I picked up The Hanging by Lottie and Soren Hammer. And this sounds really good, too. You should go read the synopsis. Because I'm not. Because this is already insanely long. Okay. And then I picked up... I found three Haruki Murakami books, you guys. And... Um... And I hear a lot of good stuff about Haruki Murakami. So I found Dance, 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 After Dark, and um, Sputnik Sweetheart. And then I picked up Long Lampkin by Lindsay Barraclough, I think. Um, this sounded really good, too. Uh, so if you're interested, go read the synopsis. And then this one sounded really good. Me and William are actually both interested in this one. It's called The Stone and the Skull. It's book one in the Lotus Kingdoms series by Elizabeth Fair. So that is our haul. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, subscribe and click that little bell icon to be notified when I post, which really isn't as much as I've been doing this past week. But um, I've been getting a lot of new books and now I need to stop because there's just way too many. All my links are down below and I will get to you guys in the next video. Later!